Finding the CPU that best fits your needs is never an easy task. First, you have to make the hard choice between AMD and Intel, but even after you've sworn your allegiance to either of these companies, you're still left with a plethora of models to choose from. However, this won't be an all-encompassing guide that spans both companies and all their various CPUs. Instead, we'd like to focus this video exclusively on the Intel Core i3 and i5 series of CPUs. Why? Well, these two series are by far the most popular ones. If you're building a high-end gaming rig, rest assured, the i5 versus i7 video is coming soon. But for now, we'll be focusing on how the more affordable end of Intel Core CPUs looks like. By the end of this video, you'll know precisely how the i5 and i3 CPUs stack up against each other and which is the right pick for you. So without any further ado, let's begin. The first thing that usually catches the eye when it comes to CPUs are some of the key specs most notably the core count and the clock speed. Nvidia used to be notorious for holding out on its customers in terms of core count, but thankfully they had to stop this practice once AMD released their first Ryzen series of CPUs. So as things stand, even the i3 offerings from Intel now come with four physical cores, which is a pretty respectable amount. And the i5 CPUs, which used to feature four cores, now come with six. But how many CPU cores do you need for gaming? Well, that depends on which games you'll be playing. Not all games are optimized to make full use of high core counts. Some games benefit greatly from having access to 6 CPU cores, while others can manage perfectly fine with as few as 2 cores. So if you're someone who likes to keep up with the newest AAA titles, you'll definitely want an i5 CPU. Not that the newest i3s can't run the latest AAA games, but the games will definitely appreciate having a higher core count at your disposal. And besides, this way you won't have to upgrade your CPU as soon as you would if you got an i3. And we have a fairly similar situation when it comes to clock speeds. Most Intel i3 and i5 CPUs generally offer base clock speeds somewhere around the 3.6 and 4 GHz marks. Basically, the higher the clock speed is, the better the performance will be. The i5s are usually faster, but not by much. More importantly, we have to see how overclocking fits in. The CPU has got to be one of the pieces of hardware that's most likely to get overclocked. What this means is simply that you push the clock speed of the CPU beyond the factory settings. We have a whole video dedicated to the risks and benefits of overclocking, so check that out if you'd like an in-depth explanation. In short terms, overclocking is basically a cheap way to increase the overall performance of your CPU. But the thing is, not all i3 and i5 CPUs can be overclocked. If you're interested in overclocking, then make sure to buy a CPU model that ends in a K, like the i3-9350K or the i5-9600K. The K indicates this is an unlocked model, meaning that it's eligible for overclocking. More importantly though, not all CPUs need to be overclocked, especially not new ones. Most video games are GPU-oriented anyway, so that's what you should focus on. All in all, we mostly recommend overclocking as a means of enabling your dated CPU to keep up with new newer games a bit longer, so don't feel like you have to go out of your way to buy an unlocked CPU. Another thing that's cool about Intel Core CPUs is that most of them come with integrated graphics. In fact, the new F-Series is the only one that lacks this feature. Of course, integrated graphics are the last thing you should factor in when deciding between an i3 and an i5 CPU, but they're still a handy backup to have in case your GPU ever fails on you, right? We definitely can't argue with this train of thought. However, we feel obligated to highlight this one piece of information, just in case integrated graphics are interfering with your decision-making process in any meaningful full way. All i3 and i5 CPUs use the same Intel UHD 630 integrated graphics chip. This means that, as far as the graphics are concerned, the cheapest i3 model will fare just as well as the most expensive i5 model. So yes, having integrated graphics as a backup is neat, but buying a more expensive CPU will not make these graphics any better in any way. And lastly, we have to mention the price. Performance is good and all, but generally speaking, the price is the factor that will make or break a CPU for you. At the moment, i3 CPUs cost anywhere between $100 and $150, while i5 CPUs cover the $150 and $300 range. 
However, Intel is once again forced to dance to AMD's tune. In the wake of the stellar launch of the third gen Ryzen CPUs, it looks like Intel is going to cut the price of their CPUs by 10 to 15 percent. So if you're looking to buy a new Intel CPU for gaming, now would be a perfect time to do so. Funny how the best time to be an Intel fan is when AMD is doing everything right. And that about does it for this video. As always, the choice depends entirely on your needs, preferences, and budget. If you're looking to get the most of new and upcoming AAA titles, then you can't go wrong with an i5 CPU. It's more future-proof and it doesn't run the risk of bottlenecking like the i3. However, there's no use in overspending on a CPU if you're just going to use an old pipsqueak of a GPU anyway. And if you need to cut some corners a bit in order to meet your budget, an i3 CPU will serve you just fine. In any case, we hope this video has provided you with ample information to make an informed decision on which of these CPUs is the best for you. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe even share this video with your friends if you think this is something they ought to know about. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon so that YouTube doesn't accidentally sneak them past you. The i5 versus i7 video will be up soon, so keep your eyes peeled if you're curious to see how they stack up. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.